Hello, I'm Daisy Cousins. Welcome to This Week in Social Justice. This week's biggest and baddest social justice fails include everyone's favorite democratic socialist demagogue Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with her latest inherently capitalistic enterprise, the woke Santa Claus who ruined Christmas for one little boy perhaps forever, and depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even have time for a bonus topic. So let's get started. But while I have your attention, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and share this video if you like it. YouTube has been throttling my channel for the last few months leading up to the US election and they're still doing it afterwards. It would really help me out if you hit that subscribe button and share the video if you think that it is worthwhile. You alone can help me beat big tech censorship because it is certainly at fever pitch right now, which makes my life very difficult. So if you like, subscribe and share, that will absolutely make my day. Self-proclaimed democratic socialist and avowed fighter of the supposed power Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or Red Cortez as I like to call her, has never shied away from her critique of capitalism. Here's what she had to say about it in 2019. Capitalism isn't, to me, is, it's an ideology of capital. It means that we seek and prioritize profit and the accumulation of money above all else and we seek it at any human and environmental cost. And to me, that ideology is not sustainable and cannot be redeemed. Now, of course, that's not what capitalism is. She has taken an extreme apocalyptic stereotype of capitalism and decided that that's what capitalism is. But of course it's not. Capitalism itself is not defined like that. And in simple terms, according to Collins Dictionary, Capitalism is an economic and political system in which property, business and industry are owned by private individuals and not by the state. That's it. Simple. And while capitalism is of course an imperfect system, people do get left behind, it has a far better track record than the big daddy government centralized policy she and her ilk are suggesting. Because while Red Cortez pertains to be a democratic socialist, that is, eschewing socialist centralized government power for worker co-ops that do essentially the same thing but at a local level, Anybody who read her Green New Deal will know that she is massively into centralized big government policies designed to completely control the lives of individuals, both economically and personally. And of course, as we know from the 20th century, that inevitably leads to an elite political class reaping all the profits and power while everybody else starves slowly to death. It also only works, as they say, at the barrel of a gun. In any case, over the last hundred or so years, capitalism has generated all of the creature comforts these Western democratic socialists take for granted, as they tweet things like F capitalism from their iPhones while listening to their favorite tunes on Spotify. It has also, combined with sensible socialized policies from government, this is different to socialism, remember, I'm talking about things like Medicare and, say, in an Australian context, our government student loan system, designed to pick up those who may get left behind in a wholly capitalist system, has led to the lowest levels of global poverty in history, which was put to Red Cortez in a 2018 interview. Because it creates value, mm -hmm. it is the system that, unlike all the others, has lifted more people out of poverty mm -hmm. over the course of human history than any other system. Well, so I think that uh, those things that you talk about, that you discuss, are part of the course of human evolution. So she didn't actually address the question other than to kind of fob it off with something suitably vague. However, Red Cortez also stated in 2018 that actually capitalism and democratic socialism can kind of coexist, which is pretty contrary to what she implied in 2019 when she said capitalism was irredeemable, but you know, whatever. Can you be a democratic socialist and a capitalist? Well, I think it depends on your interpretation. So there are some democratic socialists that would say absolutely not. There are other people that are democratic socialists that would say, I think it's possible. What are you? I think it's possible. I think Do you say to yourself, I'm, I'm a capitalist, but? I don't say that. Okay. You know, if anything, I would say I'm, I believe in, in a democratic economy, but. Gotcha. But 
the but is there. Okay. <laughs> so, and it is that but that seems to have finally been realized in Dear AOC. In order to presumably turn a profit at all costs, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez is engaging in the wholly capitalist enterprise of selling her own line of AOC branded merchandise. Now, I have absolutely nothing against people selling merch. Holy goodness me, no. It's one of the ways that YouTubers and streamers diversify their income to compensate for the inherent financial insecurity that comes from relying on an income stream that varies from month to month and can be cut off overnight with zero warning or accountability. I myself sell merchandise because I am both a YouTuber and a filthy, disgusting capitalist. In fact, shameless segue here, I happen to have a new line of merch. I have t-shirts, I have hoodies, I have mugs, and all in a variety of styles. Whether you want to let everyone know that feminists lie, or make a statement about that compulsory mask order, or wish everyone well like I do at the start of each video, there is something for everyone and just in time for Christmas. Additionally, from December 1st to 31st, I will be donating a dollar for every piece you guys purchase to Parents Beyond Breakup, an organization providing support services to parents in the midst of divorce or separation. They include an initiative called Dads in Distress. Now goodness knows there aren't anywhere near enough support services for men in distress, so since this is a pro-family, pro-dad, pro-men channel generally, I think they're a wonderful charity to donate to. I hope you all like my new merch release. Side note here, the fact that I'm giving a portion of my capitalistic income to a private charity of my own accord is a perfect example of how capitalism helps the less fortunate rather than hinders them, as Red and others suggest. If all my income were state controlled, I wouldn't be able to do that, and a centralized power could happily keep all of my excess cash for itself and be accountable to nobody. Just thought I'd point that out. Anyway, the point of the matter is that unlike me, Red Cortez is not a YouTuber or a streamer. It's expected that we have merchandise as a pretty typical source of revenue. She is a congresswoman on a six-figure regular salary, and while yes, politicians of course sell campaign merch, this isn't that. This is branded, tailored, get the bag lovey merch. She is a congresswoman behaving like a streamer, and I don't know why. Does she actually need the cash? Is it to promote her policies, given some of the slogans she uses are Green New Deal and student debt with a line through it. The other strange thing is that she's also a socialist peddling capital for profit at, might I add, exorbitant prices. AOC will charge you a full $25 US for a baby's onesie. Mugs and tote bags cost 27 bucks, as do the adult size t-shirts. But the most ironic thing about this line of merch is this tax the rich sweatshirt that costs $58 and this hoodie emblazoned with social, economic and racial justice for $65. Wow! Now look, I know that merch is always inherently expensive, it's unavoidable. I endeavor to make mine as cheap as possible while still making a viable profit. And the way I do that is that on Teespring, which I use, when you create a new piece of merchandise, it gives you the average price that people usually choose to sell it for and the profit margin that usually makes. I always pointedly lower that average price by several dollars and I make the final price as low as I can get it while still making a little bit of moolah from myself to pay my bills because I know that things like postage also costs money and I want to make it as affordable as possible for people. That is capitalism with a conscience and it's why AOC's dismissal of capitalism as profit at the cost of all else is rubbish. It's not all oil tycoons and CEOs with their feet up on the desk smoking cigars for goodness sake. So, when called out on the exorbitant prices of her merchandise, Red Cortez responded by pointing out that the prices are such because it is all made in America by people in union jobs. Good. Two thumbs up for that. That's great. And that is certainly more than most of us can say about our merchandise, but that is because mere mortals are at the mercy of companies like Teespring and their policies. But that doesn't change the irony that she is selling apparel painted with tax the rich that only the rich can afford while billing herself as a friend to the poor and the meek and the downtrodden. I will reiterate here, there is nothing inherently wrong with selling merch for profit. Not at all. I sell it. Tons of other YouTubers sell it. Donald Trump sells merchandise for about the same prices as AOC, more in some cases. But that's campaign merch, not personal merch, and he's not pretending to be a lovey-dovey redistribution of wealth moralizing socialist. The irony is inescapable. 
massive social justice fail to Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez on this one. Christmas is around the corner and all over the world people are getting into the Christmas spirit. Whether it's putting up those decorations, singing Christmas carols, shopping for presents, or going to church, people are getting excited for the big day. Arguably, the people who get the most excited are, of course, children. And one of the most exciting things for children to do in the lead up to Christmas Day is to go and see Santa Claus at their local shopping center and tell him what presents they want him to bring them. Now, Part of the, the wonderful charm of that iconic childhood experience is to come away knowing that Santa has said you will get what it is you have requested. Now this, I am guessing, is sometimes to the uh, dismay of some parents, but it is still a lovely sentiment for a kid to walk away with. And anyone who happens to be playing Santa at whatever shopping center would be pretty monstrous to deny a little kid that incredible feeling of joy by refusing bluntly to get them the present that they want. But surely, I mean, that would never happen, right? Surely, no Santa Claus would dash a child's hopes to the ground by placing their personal beliefs above the magic of Christmas. Well, in today's world, where apparently the personal is always political, that seems to be the case. Allow me to show you the saddest and most infuriating Christmas video you will ever see. What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> Okay, first of all, if that little boy had been asking for a Glock or an AR-15, then okay, yeah, Santa probably should say no and possibly tip off the kid's parents about that somewhat alarming gift their child is asking for. But it was a toy made of plastic, a Nerf gun. They've been around for ages. And while I totally understand some people's objections to giving children toy guns as presents, it's hardly a mark of being a good or a bad parent. It's simply down to personal taste and parental choice. And it is certainly not the job of some politically motivated Santa Claus to refuse on principle, thus embarrassing the child in front of everyone, which of course was going to dash his little hopes to pieces and make him burst into tears. That is what children do when they get that kind of social shock and disappointment. Especially given that the, the generally held opinion children have of Santa Claus is that if he refuses to bring you your present, then you're on the naughty list and you've done something wrong. Secondly, it is hugely insulting and disrespectful to that kid's parents for that Santa to project his personal politics onto their child because it's a dig at their parenting choices. I really hope that little boy gets his Nerf gun for Christmas and I'm sure his parents will facilitate it. But in all seriousness, that experience may have destroyed Christmas for him, or at least the magic of Santa, forever. And certainly, his poor parents must be fuming at the totally avoidable emotional mess that horrible woke Santa stirred up in their little boy. Gargantuan social justice failed to woke Santa right here. Unfortunately, I've talked so long about the first two topics that we've run out of time for a bonus topic. But tune in next time, you might get lucky.
If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.